that's incredible in terms of how we've been able to compress this. <laughs> As we've done this, we've been able to see that if you go up to our children's hospital right now, already we know a third of the children who are sitting in our beds have genetic conditions, and I would bet that by the time we finish this, we're gonna find that it's actually probably about two-thirds that do. We just haven't figured all of them out. But what I'm here to tell you about tonight is really something that's gonna be transformative. Being able to just make the diagnosis, being able to find those genetic etiologies is incredibly helpful, but really what the most exciting part is the next phase. When I started medical school, we used to have a condition that was a death sentence. It's called HIV and AIDS. And it's a completely different world today due to antiretroviral therapy and due to things that we can use for treatment. And the same thing I hope is going to be with our treatment center now for rare genetic pediatric conditions. We have the privilege because of the children's board to bring all of children's health together. And the treatment center that we're building is going to be able to do that, whether it happens to be a condition in the brain, a condition within the heart, within the lungs, whether there's uh, individuals who are surgeons and our partners for doing this, dermatologists, hematologists, but to bring all of us together in terms of children's health as one unified team of doctors and scientists to be able to open the next chapter, which is now going to be about the treatment and the therapy for this. I'm gonna tell you just one story about one condition which has been very exciting and really is what made me realize that now is the time to do this. This is not a pipe dream, this is not a science fiction novel, this is what we are doing right now at Columbia with Children's Health. It used to be that the most common genetic cause of death, I'm hoping this is a was, but I really believe it is, was a condition called spinal muscular atrophy, a condition that actually offends one in 10,000 babies who are born in our hospital and around the country. Equal opportunity disease uh, in terms of affecting everyone from all different walks of life. For the babies that were born with type one spinal muscular atrophy, the most common type of SMA, their life was measured in months. So the average life for those children approximately 12 months before they died because they could not breathe. Their muscles were not strong enough to do that. We and others believe, though, that there would be a way to be able to treat this. And so some brilliant scientists from around the world thought about something called oligonucleotide treatment, being able to know what the target was, know what the problem was, and started on a mission with clinical trials to do that approximately five years ago. Approximately three years ago, I could look and I could see the early data coming out of those to realize that whether it was mice, whether it was humans, it was going to work. It was a matter of a little bit of time, a little bit of tweaking, but it was going to work. So we started at Columbia on a mission to make sure that every single baby who was born, we would know who they were because that treatment had to be done before they even had symptoms. We had to get it immediately as soon as they were born so that we could start to be able to treat them to save their lives. And as we did that, a little over two years ago, we identified our first baby born with SMA, type one SMA. She started treatment within the first two weeks of life, and I am thrilled to tell you that she's now over two years old, a strong, healthy, perfectly treated, completely normal child, and this is going to revolutionize. Because of that work that we did at Columbia, it is now the case that every single baby born in the United States is going to be screened for spinal muscular atrophy, is going to be identified, and will have the option of either this oligonucleotide treatment or even now potentially more exciting gene replacement therapy. A therapy that will completely revolutionize this condition because these children will be able to have one and done treatment. One infusion of the gene to be able to replace the one they're deficient and to completely change this from what used to be a lethal condition with no treatment to now one of a normal, healthy life. <laughs> Knowing that we have figured out how to do that for spinal muscular atrophy, I am absolutely sure
that we can now figure out how to develop similar treatments for a myriad of other hereditary and genetic conditions. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be the same answer for each of these, and it's going to take a lot of brilliant minds and hard work, but the technology is here. The technology is now. We have the ability to diagnose these, and the next step is the most important, is now mobilizing that so that across all of these conditions we can develop the treatment. And that is what this new treatment center is going to be about. It's about being able to have that platform so that for those rare pediatric diseases, we will be able to instantly apply these new technologies now across the board to the genetic conditions that we're so good at being able to identify. As we do this, we have exactly the right combination at Columbia. We have the clinical uh, individuals who can care for these individuals until we get to the point of the treatment, and we have the basic scientists who can actually develop those treatments that we need, and we have a backyard of New York City where even what is rare as one in a million, we have at least 20 children with this condition. So that as we do this, we will be the go-to destination location in New York City, around the country, and around the world for children who need to have access to this type of care. As we do this, this absolutely is going to be a brand new chapter for these children. And I have to say that as we're doing it, the other members of our team that are the most important are our families. There are parents, there are grandparents, there are brothers and sisters who I can tell you who have taught me so very much. All I have to do is listen. They tell me all of the wisdom that they've been learning from the day, even the days they were pregnant in some cases, before those children were born. And they have rolled up their sleeves, they have gone back to graduate school, they have partnered, they have read, read the literature, they are doing their PubMed searches at midnight and emailing me to let me know what I should be focusing on, and they are incredibly dedicated, and together we are absolutely going to be successful. So to all of you as parents who are the partners in crime in terms of this, I give you my deepest gratitude because together we are going to make a difference for your children. So as we do this, this is not going to be easy. This is not going to happen overnight, but it is going to happen. So I hope all of you will be generous in terms of thinking about how we can do this. There are many of our families among you, many of our clinicians that are going to be part of it, helping this go forward, and we come forward with great excitement in terms of what the future can hold. So thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for all of you who have made this possible. And I now want to introduce Kathy Phillips, a member of our Children's Board, to introduce our guests. Uh,